welcome back. Yes, it is that time of season. We're going to have our little ghouls and goblins out there tricking and treating and having a good time, but uh, you need to be safe, of course, with Halloween one week away. Danielle Cardinal is the Public Information Officer with Ottawa Fire Services. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Great to have you here because you're going to keep us safe. Absolutely. Okay. Not just the kids, but the adults as well, right? Because we're talking about safety, uh, not only trick-or-treating, but decorations and costumes and all that kind of stuff. So where do we, we want to start here? We want to start by, you're right, protecting the young at heart and the young. Uh, I'm going to start by saying that the Canadian Association of Fire Chiefs is working closely with Duracell, so they approached us for this collaboration to help keep Canadian families, but more importantly, Ottawa residents safe during the trick-or-treat season. Mm -hmm. So we've got seven sleeps left until Halloween, yeah. and uh, I know that my neighbourhood is already chock full of decoration, so it's awesome. It's my favourite holiday. Yeah. Um, what we're seeing now is alternatives to decorations, because in the past you had your jack-o'-lantern that you would carve and you'd put in some candles here and there. But because of fire risks, we'd like to encourage people to look at the alternatives. Mm -hmm. So we've got jack-o'-lanterns that are made out of plastic, but you can also put a battery-powered candle in your jack-o'-lantern to reduce the risk of igniting something. Okay. Because decorations are very uh, easily ignitable by surrounding candles. So if you do choose to use candles, just be sure that you keep them very clear of anything that's flammable. But just for example, this particular jack-o'-lantern, yeah. which didn't require any carving at all, so no gooey stuff on your hands. Makes it easy. You just pop in your battery. A Duracell battery will keep it throughout the whole night. No matter how many trick-or-treaters you get, it'll last the whole night. Yeah. So that's our first tip. So do you see people moving towards that, though, more more than, than, than in the past? Because obviously, as a kid, I was growing up, and I used to, we carved the jack-o'-lantern, we put the candle in. And, mm -hmm. But is that sort of taking away from maybe some of the fun of Halloween? By now, we're just putting in a battery and just making sure... Luckily, people have alternatives now. If they're living in a co-op or somewhere where they can't throw out a big pumpkin, they may opt for this um, option because they can reuse it every year. That's true. But luckily, there's great events like at the malls, et cetera, where they do charity pumpkin carving. Yeah. So you can always find an alternative to your traditional jack-o'-lantern. But if you do decide to have one, I have one at home, so I'll be using a battery-operated candle inside, and I won't have any worries at all about where it's stored and what little goblins might get around to look in it. Yeah, that's Because that's a, another thing, is telling kids to, to stay away from open flames if there are. And especially, too, because even a day like today or the weekend with the wind and the rain, I mean, obviously your candle isn't going to go out. <laughs> exactly. So that helps too. Not having to run out with your barbecue lighter every five <laughs> every minutes two to seconds. ensure. Absolutely. So okay. that's a big positive Perfect. on the decorations front. But again, with some decorations, some people, again, are over the top and I love them. They're in my neighborhood and they plug in inflatable things, etc. So we'd like you to be conscious of your extension cords or your power bars. You don't want to tax those or your breakers and blow things up yeah. because that will put a damper on your plans and your activities for the evening. So just be very, very cautious. Go for battery operated because you're not using an actual plug that's fed. And if you're going to use extension cords, be sure that you limit the number of plugs you use or use a power bar to distribute that power. So power bars are probably uh, the most safe, would you say? The most safe would be a battery operated uh, decoration. That would be our first recommendation. Okay. But if you are going to use a power source, then yes, a power bar. Because if there are any um, changes in powers, power outages, etc., they will handle the load when the power comes back on. And this is obviously a good tip for the Christmas season too, right? Exactly. So decorations, whenever I'm talking about them being easily ignitable, we're talking about our big uh, holidays, Halloween being my favorite. But of course, there are the other holidays where decorations yeah. are strewn about. Because people don't, I mean, in the, in the olden days, they used to like put candles on the tree and light them. But I they, know. People still don't still do that though, right? Do they, have you ever seen anyone? I haven't myself, but yeah. maybe at um, you know the Pioneer Village, Upper yeah. Canada Village, they may. I hope okay. that they probably have the safety measures Scary. in place to do that. But even the Christmas lights that we used to untangle, you know, Chevy Chase yeah, yeah, yeah. inspired, well, we now have LEDs that don't um, put out any heat at all and are very safe. So luckily mm -hmm. we've got all these great alternatives now. And energy efficient. Absolutely. Absolutely. And okay. I'll speak of an energy efficient tool <laughs> we'll in a get few to minutes. That. I'm surprised you didn't uh, start the segment wearing this. I thought you were going to. I but, know. Uh, I was, I'm just, if still I get, time, by the way. there's still seven sleeps though. So if I start getting excited <laughs> too That's quickly, true. I'm true. You don't want to put the, uh, the costumes on too early. But that leads into the most important part about Halloween is the costumes. Uh, we know that our, goose and gob our goblins and ghosts will be out in the streets. So we're recommending highly visible costumes. Okay. Uh, you can get reflective tape to make them that much more visible. And actually right now you can pop into the fire stations in the city mm -hmm. between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. and the firefighters can give you a pedestrian light to wear on your costume that will keep you safe. Really? So while they're in stock and until November 6th you can pop in and ask for your pedestrian light. That way it will keep you safe. Oh, I didn't and know that. Mm -hmm, it's a new initiative for Be Seen, Be Safe. Okay. And it ties in nicely with Halloween. 
Um, the costumes, again, some people enjoy masks, just ensure that you can see properly or that you have someone with you to guide you should you wear um, a really elaborate mask. Yeah. But the other tip we'd like to encourage parents to do is give their kiddos a flashlight. So every child in a party should have a flashlight. It makes them easily identifiable to motorists and cyclists and people passerbys. Yeah. And this particular flashlight, speaking of energy you efficiency. You can walk around like this too if you're an adult. Like, yeah. hey kids. Endless fun. See anybody creepy out tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Except for dad. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it's better than trying to follow Whoops. your child in the, your vehicle with the headlights. So this is a nice option to keep you active. Yeah. So y everyone in the party has a flashlight. Mm. Does, it make my, yeah. does it make me look like I have too many necks? <laughs> mm. Does this look terrible, by the way? Uh, no, it's adding to the segment. I'm so glad you're doing okay, good, it. Yeah, okay. But we're running out of time, and this is important stuff. Uh, what about strength in numbers? Obviously, it's important, right? Whenever right. Uh, your kids are trick-or-treating, the more adults... The, the more better. adults, and I, at some stage, your tween or your teen will be like, Mom, Dad, I want to go out on my own. So just be sure that they have a good buddy system, three minimum, and they go out in a pack, and that they also know the area where they're going. Because we know that people are living in condos and large high-occupancy buildings, and they may go to other areas to trick-or-treat. Just take the time to show your child where they'll be trick-or-treating. Ask them to stay on one side of the street and not crisscross across the street. Because yeah. I know that optimum candy is the goal, but you want to stay in an area that you know, and you want to stay visible and then you check their candy when they get home. If I was to knock on your door at Halloween, would, would you give me any candy? I would probably give you an eraser and a pencil. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Halloween sure themed, of course, because I'm trying to balance the like dental health <laughs> with the good stuff. All right. Okay. Maybe some raw juice. You know, <laughs> some, some raw some juice. Green, That's good. All right. Green smoothies. <laughs> some tips on how to stop being creepy. <laughs> okay. Daniel Cardinal, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure, thank you course, for having me. Uh, more information, of course, I'm sure if we went to your Twitter account, your the website as well. Absolutely. Find out more about uh, how to stay safe this Halloween season. Mm -hmm. Daniel Cardinal, the Public Information Officer with Ottawa Fire Services. Thank you so much. Thank you.